What's up guys? Welcome to another lesson in Composing Layouts in React. We have already learned about Compositional Layout and how to use encapsulated CSS to achieve those layouts. I have also introduced you to the concept of stacks and splits and other layout primitives. Layouts on the web is not that unique. Many of the patterns that we do on the web can be broken down into just a handful of patterns. And then by codifying these patterns, we now have a set of layout primitives that we can use to build the solutions that we need on the web. Now, over the following lessons, we're going to be rebuilding some of the layout primitives found at Bedrock Layout Primitives Library. Specifically, we're going to be building what I like to call the spacer primitives. The spacer primitives have a common goal, that is create consistent spacing between elements on the page. Now, in the rest of this course, we're going to be using the style components library. That's a CSS and JS library that specifically is designed to enhance React applications. It's that same technology that I use to build the Bedrock Layout Primitives, and it's one that I highly recommend personally. Now that said, nothing in these lessons will be dependent on style components. One will be able to adapt them into SAS, LESS, or even vanilla CSS if you need to. So to start off, we're gonna be talking about one of the most common layout patterns found on the web, and that's putting one thing on top of another. Now, this pattern is found in form labels, paragraphs of text, social media feeds, they all have this common pattern where one thing is stacked on top of the other and there's consistent spacing in between each of those items. This is precisely the, the problem that the stack primitive is designed to solve. So in this lesson, we're gonna be building the following widget. Now you'll notice we have a few parts of this widget. There's a title section and a form section made up of two input groups and a button. Now, the one thing they all have in common is that they follow the same pattern. They all stack vertically with space between them. Here's that same mockup with the different spaces sizes pointed out. So what we need is a way to enforce that all the items will stack in the block direction, no matter if they're block or inline elements by default. We also need a way to provide consistent space between the elements without creating space around the elements. That way we can stack these things in a composable way, no matter their environment. So going forward in the rest of the lessons of this course, we are going to be using codesandbox.io. If you want to follow along, I will provide a link to a starter project that you can fork. And if you want to see the final code, there will be a link at the bottom of each and every lesson. Now let's start off with some basic markup. Uh, you can create a new file called stack.jsx. Or you can call it whatever you like. If you want to change that, just come and change it on line seven. Now, in these lessons, I'm choosing to structure my files in a way that should make it easier to focus on what's being taught and not necessarily the way I would structure a production React app. Although React doesn't have an opinion on how to structure your files, I typically like to co-locate my components together as much as possible, and then separate the files when components are reused across other parts of the application. So I've got this copied already. So let's go ahead and just bring this in here. And And of course, when I copy, I got to remember to import React from React. And there we go. Now, the first problem we need to solve is to get the label to stack on top of our input. This problem is easily solved with a single line of CSS. And so we're going to start by creating our actual stack component. To do this, we're going to import styled from styled components. And this is already pre-installed, as you'll see. It's already installed over here. But if you haven't, it's just as simple as searching for styled components. And you can like click it on the left hand side. So let's make our first styled component called stack, which is equal to styled.div. And we're doing two back ticks 
and then we're going to write our CSS in here. Display grid. Now, when we set display grid, we haven't at this point set any row or columns. So we have implicitly created a single column and it will implicitly create a new row for each element that is added inside of our stack. Now we can use our stack. We can update it like this. Let's just start off with these input groups. And as you can see over here, we've already got our label and our our input to stack on top of each other. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that not only are the labels stacked on top of each other, they are also now going to take up the entire width of the column. If you want to override this behavior, you'll simply need to use justify items property on the stack mode to change all of them or use the justify self property on the individual items you want to change. In this case, we don't need to do that. Everything's working just fine. So all we need to do now is set space between them. We can set space between them using the gap property. Now the value that we add into the gap property, it can be any valid CSS size unit, such as a pixel, a percentage, or rem. To, but we don't want to just hard code it into 10 pixels, for example. What we want to do is have this configurable via props. So what we're going to use is style component string interpolation property. And I've already got this copied and it looks like this. Don't worry about the way this um, styling changes while we do that. Now, what we're doing here, let's take a step back. We already know about JavaScript string um, template property, which is within two backticks. You can create a string. For example, let's, let's go const age equals 50. And we go let age string equal, let's put it into back ticks and we're gonna say you are, and we're gonna want to do some type of decision here. We want to say you are old if you're over 45 and young if you are 45 or less. So here we can go age is greater than 45. If that's the case, we're going to say you are old. Otherwise, we're going to say you're young. And then here, we're going to console.log age string. Now, code sandbox IO, if you've never used it before, let's refresh that so we can clear some of those errors. You can hear, see it says you are old down here. And if we go ahead and change this to 30, now it says you are young. Now, this is the default way that a regular template literal works, is that everything inside of this dollar sign curly and then a final curly, it gets it breaks out of the string mode and it evaluates it. And then we go back into string mode for the rest. Now, there are things called tag template literals. Now, and that's exactly what this is, is a tag template literal, which is a way to custom parse that JavaScript expression. So we can actually have more control over what's going on 
inside of the dollar sign curly instead of just evaluate whatever gets handed to us. So when we are using style.div and we break into this curly, we actually have the option to pass in a function. And that function, oops, that function has access to the props that we pass into this component and we can return a string that will ultimately be used in our CSS. So in this specific example, we are taking the props and we are going to, if we have provided a props.gutter, we will evaluate that and return whatever string is passed into the gutter prop. But if we don't pass in a string to the gutter prop, we're gonna to default to one rem. That way there's always some gap in between our items. So once again, now we can actually do a little bit more. Let's take, for example, these inputs. We don't want them to just have the default one rem, as you can see, it's already been given over there. We want to give them, let's give them a gutter. equal to 0 0.25 rem or one quarter rem. That's a little bit closer. It's a little bit more realistic to what an input group would have. Now, we also need in between here and here, we need to have a gutter. So let's put on, let's call, put stack there. And you can see now this is a stack. This group is stacked on top of this group, which is stacked on top of this button. And each one has a one rem gutter placed in between them. Uh, let's do the same thing with the, with the, our, uh, heading level two in our paragraph. And let's don't just go with the default gutter. Let's give it a gutter equal to um, 0 0.5 rim. And we're, we're doing awesome here. Now we just need to get a bigger gutter here. Now something probably bigger than the default. So let's put a stack around the entire thing. And that's pretty good, but we want a little bit bigger here. So in this case, let's go twice as big. Let's go two rem. There we go. That looks a lot better. So now we have a component that will universally stack all of its children and will separate them via a configurable value that's passed into the gutter prop. We could stop here. This does exactly what we want, but I'm going to recommend one more treat, one more tweak, I should say, sorry, to this gutter prop. Right now we are allowing any value to be passed into this gutter, but for consistency is best practice to adopt some type of spacing scheme when you're laying out items on the web. Choosing a good spacing scheme is beyond the scope of this course. And I'm not a, not a designer so i'm not going to go into like all the different methodologies to create a spa spacing scheme also if you work with a design team they probably already have a spacing scheme set up in their style guide that they're using but let's just create a spacing scheme um, in bedrock layout primitives we there is a spacing scheme that's based on t-shirt sizes and it looks something like this. I just copied it. So we're creating an object here called spacing map and we have some different sizes. The large, for example, is one rem, medium is half a rem and so on and so forth. So instead of 
just accepting any value that gets passed in here. Let's adjust it like this. So spacing map. And we're going to pass in the props dot gutter. And then we're going to default to, oops, to the large. Now, by the way, I kind of glossed over this earlier. If you're not aware of what these double um, hooks or double um, qu question marks mean, this is called a null, nullish coalescing. <laughs> operator. If this evaluates to anything that's nullish, meaning null or undefined, then it will go to this value as a backup. But if this does evaluate to something, then this is ignored. So what happens is we can pass in a prop to our gutter. And if that gutter prop if that key is not inside of the spacing map, then it will just default back to a one RAM gutter. And you can see based off the way, since we haven't changed anything yet, that's what's happened is everything is now one RAM over here. So let's update our component and just with the power of copy and paste, cause I've already have it available. Uh, we can get the same exact thing to work exactly how we did before, but instead of passing in the values directly, now we're passing in properties like extra large, medium, small. And this gives a little bit more um, description to what these spacing values are in relation to each other. And that's it. We are, we're done. Um, at the end of the lesson, there is a link to the, the sandbox with all the code. And, and that's it. So now that we have our stack items, we need to now fall kind of, we need to fix the most common problem besides stacking, which is putting one thing next to the other. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn about the split layout primitive. We'll see you on the next lesson.